morning. Welcome to OldStMary's.com, Old St. Mary's Church in the South Loop of Chicago, where today there are a collision of special things going on. Maybe the most dominant for us is the opening of Old St. Mary's School once again. It's the first time the kids have been in person in several months. So we will especially be remembering them and the teachers and staff all during today's time. It's also, what I like to get in, only four months till Christmas. So today is August 25th. We celebrate Tuesday of the 21st week in Ordinary Time. The saints for today, who we will mention in the Eucharistic prayer, St. Louis and St. Joseph of Palestine. O Lord, turn your ear and answer me. Save the servant who trusts in you, my God. Have mercy, O Lord, for I cry to you all the day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. As I said, brothers and sisters, as we gather today, we are aware that schools throughout the country are trying to come back together in different ways, either in person or online, at every level of education, from the youngest to the oldest. And so part of our prayers for today's Mass are certainly for them, for healing of those who are sick, for solution to uh, what is before us in this pandemic. As we come together, let us acknowledge that we need to put God first and ask for God. I confess to Almighty God and to me, my brothers and sisters, that I have prayed through my, through my thoughts, in my work, in what I have done, and in what I have failed, through my thoughts. Through my thought, through my most greatest thought. And therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, O Lord of our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us O oh God, you caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose. Grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. I ask you, brothers and sisters, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our assembling with him, not to be shaken out of your minds suddenly or to be alarmed either by a spirit or by an oral statement or by a letter allegedly from us to the effect that the day of the Lord is at hand. Let no one deceive you in any way. To this end, he has also called you through our gospel to possess the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the traditions that you were taught, either by an oral statement or by a letter of ours. 
May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting encouragement and good hope through his grace, encourage your hearts and strengthen them in every good deed and word. The word of the Lord. The Lord comes to judge the earth. The Lord comes to judge the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world firm, not to be moved. He governs the peoples with equity. The Lord comes to judge the earth. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and what fills it resound. Let the plains be joyful and all that is in them. Then shall all the trees or of the forest exult. The Lord comes to judge the earth. Before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to rule the earth. He shall rule the world with justice and the peoples with his constancy. The Lord comes to judge the earth. Alleluia, alleluia. The word of God is living and effective able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You pay tithes of mint and dill and cumin and have neglected the weightier things of the law, judgment and mercy and fidelity. But these you should have done without neglecting the others. Blind guides who strain out the gnat and swallow the camel, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You cleanse the outside of cup and dish, but inside they are full of plunder and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, cleanse first the inside of the cup so that the outside may be made clean. The Gospel of the Lord. Don't you just love good news gospels? I remember many years ago, I was actually outside the city of Chorazim up in the Galilee region of Israel, and we were sitting on basalt boulders. And the guide who was taking us around at that point pointed out, you realize that in the gospel of any of the gospels, when you hear the word woe, that's, that's a very mild translation of expletive language of the day, meaning that, that, that it's a curse. It, it, it is something, you know, Jesus is not holding back at this point. It's, and, and he's giving them the obvious. He, he's saying, you don't understand what you're asking because you're not looking at the basics behind it. So the basic way that the law paints out in this is that all the law is based on loving God and loving neighbor. We all know that. We, we've heard Jesus say that any number of times. The Jewish people had a whole number of very prescribed laws that people were to observe, and uh, it was the Pharisees' job to keep reminding of them of that. But in reminding of them of that, it was to say, this is how you get back to the basics. This is how you get back to the basics of loving God and loving neighbor. So as I said, today is the first day of school in a new school year, in a new year, in a new way, a new paradigm of how we are living these days. But the basic remains the same, and for a Catholic school there is this charge, and the charge is very straightforward. Love God, love your neighbor, and you can't do one without the other. So the, the basic thing a Catholic school has to do is teach people how to love. And what we are wrestling with as a church in this country and throughout the world during this pandemic is what is the best way to show love and concern? 
We are trying to do a balance between coming together safely, but also an awareness that we still need to keep some distance. We have to put, uh, we have to put things in place that protect us. So that's, that's part of love, and, and it's, it's a tough part of love. The other side of that is to still, still say that the church, what the church teaches and how it celebrates is still of great value. And we have to figure out the best way to use that to help people to grow and to know and to have hope in the midst of this time. Now, that's the basic of all Catholic school. What, whatever grade level, you know, if you're going from preschool all the way to postdoctoral work, that whole range is central to Catholic teaching. Now, the, the other part that comes into play with today's gospel is the reminder that there are other laws and rules that you have to figure out. You know, the, the ideal Catholic school and the ideal Catholic student is someone who teaches the basics and then helps them to explore what does that mean in terms of how you interpret it in your own life, how you interpret it in public life, and how you make it real in the world so that we can see the kingdom of God, which is actually the basis of all the rules and laws. So in Catholic school, we hope that as we go day by day through the different lessons in all the different subjects, that that love of God is being incorporated. But what does it mean? How does that play out in terms of how we treat family and friends, how we, how we figure out what our jobs are as we figure out how to use our jobs for the betterment of the community. So it's a tough thing. We've, we've got Jesus screaming at us, but the thing he is most screaming at us, look at love first and then make sense of everything else in light of that. So as we start our new school year, that's what we pray for, enlightenment, in the midst of understanding God's great love for us all. Let us gather our prayer. We continue to pray for the church throughout the world, especially in this time of pandemic that it will keep offering messages of hope and give people ways to come together that are safe and healing. We pray for the Lord. Let us pray for our country and its laws and government. We know we are in the midst of beginning election campaigns. We know there are many things being said. We pray for guidance for the truth and guidance for the best way to lead our country we pray. We pray for all schools, especially for our own school of Old St. Mary, for guidance during the course of this year in sharing good news and in sharing good education, for blessings on the students, faculty, and staff, that they may be well and they may be safe. We pray. We pray for all of those dealing with the coronavirus crisis those working for solutions to uh, preventing it, those working for solutions to overcome it. We pray for those who are directly caring for patients, for the patients themselves, and for protection of all those who do not have. We pray. We pray for all those who have died, all those who have died of coronavirus, of cancer, and every other disease, and especially today we remember Jonathan Paul. We pray. And as usual, now I don't know if any classrooms are, are signed in to Mass today. If they are, this is doubly important. For those of you at home, this is a chance to express your prayers out loud. And uh, if you say them nice and loud, you can hear them through the lens of the camera. Let's pause a moment and consider those other prayers that we have in our lives, especially for the people that talk. Gracious God, accept us in our prayers as 
we place them before you with confidence through Christ. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty.
Do not have a larger church spread throughout the world. And bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and lay our bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your peace. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Paul, with St. Louis, with St. John Castellano, and all the saints who have preached you throughout the ages, we may merit the eternal heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. In the words Jesus gave us, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And now in some special way, let's offer each other. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy and gracious effect so that things we may please you, our Lord. 